Hello everyone, welcome. We're continuing with our series on the character of God and we're looking at the revelation of God's character through the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Father, we thank you for your name. We thank you that the name of Jesus is above every name. And we thank you, Lord, that as we come in his name, we have your attention. We just worship you, we love you, and we pray, Lord, for revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 9. Let's go to Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. And please, if you are at home, grab your Bible so you can underline it and you can meditate on these scriptures. Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So this is one of the prophetic scriptures foretelling the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, we see Isaiah looking into the future and saying, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, for unto us a child is born. So in other words, a human child will be born and unto us a son is given. So the Son of God will be given in human form and the government or the kingdom will rest upon his shoulders. Now his name, now these are the different names that will be given to this wonderful son who will be given as a human being. He will be called number one, wonderful. And that word wonderful means miraculous in his being and his works. He will be outside the normal that which excites wonder and amazement and admiration. So in other words, this person who will be walking the earth will be a miraculous person, both in birth and in deed. His name will be called Wonderful. The second name is Counselor. Now, a counselor in ancient times was a very specialized and honorable rank. It was given to people that were respected and honored because of their wisdom, their insight and their understanding and uh, they could stand near to kings and be the king's advisor so it's an expressive it is expressive of great wisdom and of qualifications to guide and direct humanity so the son who was given whom we know as the lord jesus christ would have tremendous wisdom and be able to advise and give humanity advice um, giving them direction to come back to god and to walk in the ways of god the third name is mighty god mighty God and the Hebrew word for that is El Gibor El Gibor and that basically means the all-powerful God who is a valiant warrior he is a champion so when Jesus came Jesus came as a champion as a mighty warrior although he was a servant although he was uh, meek and gentle and humble he overcame the powers of darkness i mean he just cast out demons with the word he healed the sick with the word so the government of god was resting upon his shoulders as he walked on this earth and he executed a righteousness and justice he executed the government of god perfectly as he walked on the earth he was a warrior he was a champion and you can have a look at two scriptures there 1 timothy 3 verse 16 where it tells us that jesus is god and you can have a look at Hebrews 1 verse 8. The fourth name given to our Lord Jesus Christ is Everlasting Father. Everlasting Father. That means the Father of eternity. Now kings were often called Father in ancient times and our Lord Jesus is King Eternal. He's the Eternal King. So he is the Everlasting Father. And then the fifth name that is given in that scripture is he is the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace, and that is the ruler of Shalom. The word prince means ruler or head. And so the Lord Jesus Christ is wonderful. He's the counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. And he is the prince or the giver of Shalom and all the blessings that are associated with that word Shalom. In Isaiah 7 verse 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. So God is going to give the world a sign, and particularly Israel. And the sign will be, A virgin will conceive and bear a son, and you will call his name Emmanuel. 
Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. So it's so important once again for us to, to actually meditate on this and wait on the Lord in his presence to get this revelation. Jesus is not just a lesser God. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the everlasting Father. He is the Almighty God and he is God with us. In 1 John 5 verse 20 it says, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. So the Lord Jesus Christ came as Son of God in order to give us understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. So we are in Jesus Christ, the one who is true. This is the true God and eternal life. Jesus Christ is the true God and Jesus Christ is eternal life. So when we are born again into the family of God and we are grafted into the tree of life, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, when we are grafted into him, we are grafted into his life. And so we become part of his life. He is the true God. <laughs> Wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, everlasting Father and God with us and reveals the character of God as Yahweh. Number one, <clears throat> the name of Jesus is Yeshua, which means Jehovah saves. So every time we speak the name Jesus, we are actually saying Yeshua saves, Jehovah saves. So when I say the name Jesus, I'm actually speaking the name Jehovah. And then I'm speaking his function, what he does. He saves, he sozos us. He brings us out of bondage. He brings us out of our sinful state. He brings us out of the kingdom of darkness. And he translates us, transfers us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So when I say the word Jesus, I'm saying Yahweh saves. What about Jehovah Jireh? What does Jehovah Jireh mean? Jehovah will provide, or the Lord our provider, the Lord who sees and provides. Now Philippians 4 verse 19 says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by whom? By Christ Jesus. Jesus. So Jehovah Jireh is fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ in that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory through the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Let's go and have a look at Matthew 6 verse 20, uh, 32 and 33. What did Jesus say? Jesus says that all the Gentiles seek after these things. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? He says the Gentiles seek after these things. Why? Because that's their focus in life. But he says this, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So when I seek first the kingdom of God, now who's the king of this kingdom? The Lord Jesus Christ. So when I seek first his government in my life and I allow him to rule in my life, he says, then he will provide everything that I need. Praise God. So he is Jehovah Jireh. What about Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer? Is the Lord our healer? Well, Matthew 8 verse 17 says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying he himself took our infirmities and he carried our sicknesses. So Jesus took our infirmities and he carried our sicknesses. What does that mean? He is Jehovah our healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. 1 Peter 2.24 says, He own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live to righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Jesus is Jehovah Rapha. It's by his stripes that we were healed. Now, the third one we're going to look at is Jehovah Nissi. The Lord my banner. The Lord is my canopy. So, a banner is a standard, it's, it's, it's a flag that was used by the, the, the um, various tribes during warfare to identify the, the armies, or it was a canopy that um, would protect. So is Jesus our banner? Is he our canopy? Let's look at Matthew 16 verse 17. Matthew 16 verse 17. Jesus says to, to Peter, he asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? And um, different people had different opinions and then Peter said you are the Christ the son of the living God 
And the Lord Jesus says to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, who has revealed what to you, my name. He has revealed to you that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. I am the Christ. I am the one that has been sent. So who is Christ? He is the anointed one that has been sent to deliver, to set free, and to reconcile man with God. Let's look at John 14, verses 13 and 14. Jesus said, Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So what is this banner that we have in Jesus Christ. It's his name. Whatever you ask in my name, when you lift up my name and you make your petition in my name, you are lifting up my name as a banner and you're lifting my name up as a canopy, as a protection. And when you speak to the Father in my name, he will do whatever you are asking him to do. And the Father would be glorified in the Son. The Lord our banner when we lift up the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus says, whatsoever you ask in my name, go in my name, make disciples in my name, um, cast out demons in my name, lay hands on the sick in my name. What is that? That is lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. Now, here's a condition. We need to be abiding in him. And as we abide in him, in other words, we remain in vital union. We remain in relationship with him. We are sensitive to him and to his Holy Spirit. And we, we, we have the banner of Jesus over our lives. And as I speak the name of Jesus, I'm speaking uh, in absolute faith and trust, knowing that his name is above every name. Let's look at Philippians 2 verse 8. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. So in other words, Jesus knew who he was when he came to this earth. He knew that he was God. But he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on the earth and those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So the name of Jesus is highly exalted. And there's no other name that has the power, the glory, and the attention of God. When we speak the name of Jesus, remember Yeshua means Jehovah saves. When I speak that name, I'm speaking out the salvation of God. And that is my banner that I carry with me wherever I go. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is our peace. Is Jesus our peace? Did Jesus come to bring peace? John 14 verse 27. John 14 verse 27. Jesus says, peace I leave with you my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Jesus gives us his peace. Now his peace is not based on our happening in the world. His peace is based upon his government, upon his kingdom, upon his principles, and upon faith in God's eternal purpose and plan. So God's peace is not dependent on what happens in the world and it's not affected by what's happening in the world. We can have peace in the midst of trial. We can have peace in the midst of trouble. We can have peace in the midst of tribulation. Regardless of what's happening outside in the world, we know in whom we believed and we are persuaded that he is able to keep that which we commit to him. He is our peace. Let's have a look at John 16 verse 33. John 16 verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. In other words, cheer up. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we can walk in Christ's victory while we're living on this earth. And he wants us to walk in victory. Doesn't mean to say we don't go through trials. We will. But we have the victory. Why? Because he is our banner. He is our healer. He is the one who provides for us. And so he is our peace. There's a number of scriptures that you can meditate on that. Um, I'll just read a few for you. You can make notes of them. It's John 20 verse 21, Isaiah 57 verse 19, Luke 2 verse 14, Acts 10 verse 36, 
Romans 1 verse 7 and just about every letter that the Apostle Paul and Peter write to the churches he starts them off with grace and peace so in other words God wants us to experience his chaset his grace his loving kindness and his shalom and shalom is the all-encompassing word where God provides everything that we need now the fifth name we're going to look at is Jehovah Ra, the Lord our shepherd is Jesus our shepherd did he fulfill that name? Did he demonstrate that characteristic of God? Yes, he did. Matthew 9 verse 36. Let's have a look and see. It says, When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. So when Jesus saw, remember we spoke about this last time, that's Al-Rahi, the one who sees. Jesus sees and he knows where you are and what you need. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion because they were weary and scattered like sheep without a shepherd now jesus came as the good shepherd let's go to john chapter 10 john chapter 10 it's jesus says in verse 10 the thief does not come to steal except to steal kill and destroy i've come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly so jesus came that we might have life an abundant life i am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus fulfilled that aspect of Yahweh, the revelation that the Jewish nation had of God in the Old Testament under the Mosaic Covenant. Jesus comes and he fulfills that and he demonstrates that he is truly the good shepherd. Um, John 3 verses 16 to 18. This is famous scripture. Everybody loves John 3 16. For God so loved the world. Verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the begotten Son of God. What has this got to do with sheep? Well, Jesus is the good shepherd and Jesus came to do something. He didn't come to this earth to condemn. We've already been condemned. When Adam sinned, he entered into the condemnation of death. So the whole human race has entered into that condemnation already. And the only way to, to escape that condemnation is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Mosaic Covenant, the people had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and they used animal blood sacrifices as a token of that faith. We've entered into the fulfillment of the New Covenant, which fulfills every one of the Old Testament types and shadows. And we have now entered into covenant with God through the blood of Jesus Christ, who is our great shepherd. He laid down his life for the sheep so that we could enter into eternal life and have abundant life in him and through him our great shepherd hallelujah hebrews 13 verse 20 hebrews 13 verse 20 may the god of peace who brought up our lord jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you complete in every good work to do his will working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen so who is the great shepherd the lord jesus christ and the god the father brought our lord jesus christ up from the dead as the great shepherd of the sheep sheep through his the blood of his everlasting covenant and he says may he make you complete in every good work to do his will and may he work in you what is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ amen jesus christ is the good shepherd and he laid on his life for the sheep he fulfilled jehovah Ra. A. if you read psalm 23 you'll find jehovah Ra a there jehovah said can you jehovah is our righteousness did Jesus become our righteousness? Did Jesus fulfill that? Yes, well, let's have a look at Isaiah 53, verses 10 to 12. And we'll see the prophetic word regarding Jesus coming to become our righteousness. Isaiah 53, verses 10 to 12. 
It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He put him to grief. And when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities so this is the prophetic word regarding the lord jesus christ who was going to come and die on the cross and he was going to take the judgment of god on himself for our sin and our iniquity but once he had taken the judgment for our sin upon himself it says he shall see his seed in other words the lord jesus christ will see his offspring and shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in the lord jesus hand and he shall see the labor of his soul or the travail the labor of his soul and be satisfied jesus shall see why he suffered he will see the fruit of his suffering and he will be satisfied when he sees you and i as members of his body part of his kingdom that brings him joy that brings him satisfaction it was worth it as far as he is concerned by his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many so he justifies you he declares you not guilty and when he declares you not guilty he then declares you righteous with him so jesus paid the price for our righteousness john 1 verse 29 the next day john saw jesus walking to him and said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world jesus becomes our righteousness by doing what by taking away our sins jesus takes away our sin and because of that we become righteous let's go and have a look at second corinthians 5 verse 21 let's read from verse 18 it says all things are from god who has reconciled us to himself through jesus christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation god has given us a ministry of reconciliation not condemnation so many people are out there trying to condemn sinners sinners sin that's what they do they sin and jesus never came to condemn sinners he came to save sinners he came to bring the good news that God loves them and that he wants them to be redeemed or reconciled to him through his blood so he was not imputing their trespasses to them and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation so God has committed to us the word of reconciliation be reconciled to your father he loves you now then we are ambassadors for Christ even though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God now listen to this Verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin. So God the Father, when Jesus laid on that cross, God the Father made him sin. He who knew no sin, he made him sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus Christ is the Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah said, can you? You can look at Romans 3 verses 22 to 26. 1 Timothy 2 verses 5 to 6 and John 2 verse 2. Jesus is our righteousness. The seventh one we're looking at is Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah is there or the Lord is there. The Lord is present. The Lord is with me. Let's go back to Isaiah 43 and look at the prophetic word regarding the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 43 verse 4. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I've loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. To the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. So the Lord is calling people from the north, the south, the east and the west, from all corners of the earth. And he's saying, come, I've given up my son. My son is, is laying down his life for you and I'm calling you to come to me. What does this mean, to come to him? Well, it means to come into his presence, to come and live in his presence, abide with him. Remember, one of the names of Jesus is Emmanuel, which is God with us. And here we see the prophetic word where Emmanuel will, will come to the earth and he will call people from all walks of life and from the four corners of the earth to come to him as sons and daughters. Now, 
Let's have a look at Matthew 28 verse 20. Jesus is telling his, his disciples to go out and to go and make disciples of the nations of the world. And he says, teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. So here he's fulfilling that prophetic word. You're going to go out and you're going to be calling people from the four corners of the earth to come to me. All right. Teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you. Lo, I am with you. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is present. I am with you even to the end of the age. Let's have a look at John 14, verse 18 to 23. Jesus says, I will not leave you often. I will come to you. So he's talking about his after his crucifixion. He says, when I die, I will come back again. And when I come back, I will not leave you as orphans, but I, I, the Lord Jesus, will come to you. That is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. He is with me all the time. Let's go to Acts 3 verse 19. This is Peter and he says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. Times of refreshing come from his presence and as we abide in his presence, we receive the manifestations of his presence. It's amazing that as you spend more and more and more time with the Lord, so you experience deeper and deeper relationship with him and you go deeper and deeper into his presence and you experience more of it. You can have a look at John 14 verses 4, 5, 7 to 9. 1 John 2 verses 27 and 28. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Romans 8 and 11 where the Lord Jesus is with us all the time. So what we see, the name and person of Jesus brings all the attributes, the character traits and revelations of our God throughout the ages into one person. He reveals God. He is the perfect, the exact and the only true representation of God. He is the word of God, the promise of God, the seed of Abraham, the seed of the woman, the great and mighty God who revealed himself to the patriarchs. He revealed himself to Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, David, and all the prophets. And finally in the flesh, he revealed himself as the son of God and the son of man. When we speak the name of Jesus, Yeshua, we are calling on the creative and mighty names of El, of Genesis, we are calling on the redemptive names of Yahweh of the Old Covenant or the Mosaic Covenant. We are treading on holy ground and by the name of Jesus we have access into the very holy of holies, the courts of the God of gods, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. When we speak the name of Jesus, every one of the names of El, El Eloah, Elohim, El Rohi, El Shaddai, all of those names and all the names that were revealed, all the attributes of God that were revealed through Yahweh are all concentrated and find their fulfillment in that one name, Jesus. So when we speak the name of Jesus, we are speaking every single one of those revelations from the Old Testament. God bless you. We'll chat again soon.